Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Noah Walters. I own a few e-commerce companies and today I'm just gonna take you on a typical day and what that looks like for me. I just got a text from a team member of mine on Swifton and we did secure a new client. So that's already a great start for today. I'm super grateful that we did onboard some new clients though because it's a perfect time of the year for us. We're in a little bit of a growth phase. Uh, I've hired a few new people for the agency and they're helping out a ton. Uh, and I feel grateful to be able to, you know, kind of hand off some of those tasks that the rest of the team are working on to them, uh, which has allowed us to bring on a few newer clients. So I'm going to go and onboard them, go through our onboarding process with them. There are two really large accounts, so it's a huge pickup for us. Part of the onboarding process that we do is it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to show you guys a little bit about uh, how we do it when I get to the uh, coffee place, but it's the same routine that we use for every new client and it's a structure that allows everyone to pretty much be on the same page and have a, a built-in set of expectations when we're working with them just because we felt like that helps us it helps them and it helps just build in what's to be expected while working with us kpis milestones and all of that that the team along with myself are going to help build out for them uh, and, and keep everybody accountable and on track so I uh, hope you guys are all having a great day no matter when you're watching this morning, afternoon, evening. I'll pick you guys up here in a second. Ice matcha flavor. For gambling golf, we're in the process right now of putting together some Father's Day campaigns. And one of the ones that I loved was this one. I'm going to show you guys it real quick. This is our first Father's Day and our product is super gift centric and so we're just hitting it hard with a lot of these Father's Day campaigns. I'll show you guys another one just because I'm going through these now and trying to build out some of our uh, Amazon ads as well. But check this one out. This one's really funny. Fathers come in all shapes and sizes. As a matter of fact, some aren't even your father. Just ask Cal. Last year, he lost eight rounds of gambling golf and now he's indebted to me and all of my friends and he has to call us all daddy. Fetch me another drink. Yes, Teddy. My partner, Teddy, is the absolute mastermind behind all of this creatives. And my job is essentially go through and create our Amazon ads based off of the creatives that he gives me. And we're also going to launch ads on Facebook. Um, obviously, we put the, the post on Instagram as well. But the goal is to basically have a group of high quality um, posts that we can do and then repurpose those for ads um, and just try to grow as much halo presence as we possibly can across all platforms. One of the main struggles that a lot of new brands have is just having budget to create high quality ads. And so what I've always done for a lot of my startups is I'm using a website called Billow and it's where you can go on Billow and essentially get UGC done for all of your different brands and work with different creators and they'll give you uh, different sorts of videos and you can just repurpose those on all your socials. I know that probably sounded super salesy, but I don't have any affiliation with Billow. I just have used them a ton and I've had a lot of success with it along with some of the clients that I work with. They also use Billow. Uh, and so if you're struggling for that budget, uh, Billow is a really good option. All right, so this is what I wanted to show you guys. This is for every time that we onboard a new client for Swifton. What we do is we put together the scope of work and essentially just line out what the project uh, consists of and how it's going to look like working with us, kind of what our specific deliverables are, um, the assumptions, blah, 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 all of that, project timeline, our fee structure for the specific client, and this is kind of just a placeholder. We switch this depending on how many SKUs they have and how much work we think it's going to take on our end. This is just something that we always build out for the clients because it, it always helps to have a clear set of expectations. And having an agency over time, I've learned that the better we are establishing some sort of groundwork and frame for exactly what is supposed to be entailed inside of the, the agreement and the working period with us, the better off both parties are, both my team and the client. And it just sets expectations for a lot of the clients early on for the agency. I didn't have these. And a lot of times there would be things that the client tries to add on our plate that weren't in the scope of work or in the initial set of agreements. Um, and it's just like, you know, you, you want to make sure that everyone involved is happy. And a lot of times if the client is doing that to us, it leads to more stress on my end. It leads to my team being stressed uh, and overwhelmed. So having this, especially if you have an agency, I've just learned 
that it helps us be more productive, it helps the client be happier, and overall it helps just the whole process be a lot more seamless. Uh, so every single time that we onboard a client, I make one of these for them, uh, depending on what they choose as uh, their plan that they want from us and you know running their Amazon account, etc. So this is just something that I thought was interesting to share with you guys because it took me a lot of time to figure this out, although it might seem just like super straightforward. Like why didn't this dude have something that's so simple? So yeah, that's what I'm gonna work on. I'm sending that over uh, to both of our new clients and I'm excited to work with them because they are two really cool brands. It's really fun to work with brands that I can use, like their products I plan on using. Um, and we can get behind them. My team's super excited to onboard them. It's great for our, our agency, and I'm super blessed to be able to onboard them and take them on as new clients. Oh yeah, I remember that brand. For it sure. goes back to like the 95 to five rule, which is you know only 5% of the market is in the market to buy your product right now. So how do you stay top of mind for the mm. 95%? So when mm. they are in the market for it, they're ready to buy. I like that, um, I like that. So, the whole purpose of this was like, you know, retargeting ad. Okay, they've already seen it. Now, how can we explain the product without actually using words and within like, you know, 15 seconds? Gotcha, okay, um, Tot totally makes sense then. And that's probably why you have the reviews in there too for the retargeting. Yeah, exactly, thing. dude, yeah. it's proof of concept is all it is. So cool. uh, realistically, like the project projectile ball video will probably run as it's, as a completely separate campaign down the road. It's it's good up here for the value because it makes people think. And I actually think it's the decoy effect where people go three, well, I don't really need three. And they end up buying two anyways because it's under a hundred bucks. Gotcha, that totally makes sense. And it's, I noticed that too, the more that we're, get, we're getting orders, I feel like as people are giving this as gifts, I feel like inevitably they're gonna come back and want more, whether that's for like a birthday, or for Christmas. So I think that like, if we're able to just get our foot in the door with some of these customers, and then you're working the magic of retargeting, I feel like over time, that's just gonna build and build and build. And I feel like a lot of our sales are gonna come from that email list that you have built out already. So I love I love that direction. Yeah, and hopefully the email list will like start conversion. Like, the, like we have the flow set up to do that right now. But like, what's interesting is that people aren't even using discounts codes it's not so weird like why <laughs> like the discount the discount goes like right in front of them yeah dude and in like in many cases it's probably just the reminder but a lot of people don't use discount codes which is weird but a discount code will get someone to the website you know that is so yeah that's so bizarre I and mean, we'll take that obviously but that's, <laughs> that's so weird yeah and so that that's an interesting approach or as ad like, is there any ad groups that we can ramp up that are like performing better than the other ones that like, just cause I'm trying to think about it. If we're allocating, what was it? $30 a day to test. Yeah. So if we're able to allocate $30 and I don't know, I mean, it's probably way too early to tell. I'm just thinking because I mean, it's June 5th. And so I don't know what your timeline is to stop running ads on Shopify, but it might be a decent idea and I don't know what you think about it to run a little bit more in the red just to get emails and stuff for Shopify if we're getting conversions and I don't know mm -hmm. I don't know how many emails we've gotten thus far to have that make sense but if we're running a little bit in the red my thought is some of those people that purchase the product or even go to the website are going to come back like I said for a Christmas or for a birthday so if we're able to maybe leverage father's day as a time when people are buying gifts and in that mindset already and then we can kind of pivot that to fill our email list i don't know if that's something that, that you're thinking about too or like where your head's at with that if we take our highest performer from performing creative from one and just solo it out and test different messaging could we crank like 60 bucks a day on it and would it start converting higher the hard part is is like you don't like until you start seeing like sales trickle in more consistently, that's not really, that doesn't trigger to me. Like we're in a good spot to crank up ad spend. Okay. Um, but at the same time, I'm absolutely not opposed to it. I would like to build an audience as much as possible, but we haven't proven that uh, Clavio is like a high converting, um, you know, platform for us yet.
operating at a break even like let's just keep it rolling yeah I, I think that's probably what we just for like a couple days what do you think about like how many people is in, are in our email list right now because like we can kind of gauge it like that like if i don't mind paying a dollar per person on that list you know I mean? a dollar or less so if we've spent I, I i would even look at the ad spend as like you know we spent x amount of dollars this is how many people are in our email list so what i did as of june 2nd was I went in and I'm like you, man, I'm like trying to be super conservative, but you can see with some of these budgets, yeah, I've got $100 a day. Um, I've got $200 a day down there for the budgets. So what I'm doing is I'm basically telling Amazon they're willing to spend a bunch of money, but then I'm putting our bids really low per keyword. So what it does is it tells Amazon, hey, we're willing to spend, but we're only gonna spend at 60 cents per keyword. You know what I mean? So if you go, I think our ROAS should be a lot better now because I made those changes uh, June 3rd. So if you look at June 3rd to June 5th, our actual like spend compared to sales, because I just started doing that when you and I got off our last phone call and I was like, I'm gonna double down on the gift keywords. That was kind of when I established that. So what I think is gonna come from this is we're gonna start to rank more for that gift we're going to get a lot of sales for that just that gift keyword but dude surprisingly a lot of our amazon sales are organic so oh, it's like really yeah oh I, dude i bet i wonder if they're coming from ads then and then people are jumping out and going and checking amazon yeah yeah they could be coming from ads they could be coming from just overall ranking on amazon they could be coming from socials you know what i mean so it's like Mm -hmm. It gets to a certain point where it's hard to tell exactly where the traffic is coming from. And I tell that to my clients too for Swift and it's like, Amazon is like, it's good because it's, that's where everyone goes to shop, but it's also hard to tell like whether or not you're running an ad on Shopify, you're running an ad on Instagram and people go to Amazon just because they'd rather buy from Amazon. It's just, it's just one of those things. But um, I'm just going to continue to double down on those giftable keywords. I think that's where a lot of our potential is. I mean, already today we're, we're seeing that lift to in sales on Amazon. So all I think about is last time during holiday season, we both said, Oh fuck. And then we both said, fuck it. And then that was when we made money. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. I would say let's like go in the middle of like, fuck it and like not fuck it. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. I'm going to ramp up a little on like on your end ramp up. And then on my end, like I'm going to be slowing down after the 10th anyways. Okay. So, perfect. Hopefully like this upcoming weekend can be like a good time to capitalize. Um, okay, perfect. Yeah, I'm with then, that. Yeah. We're, and then after that, like I'm going to shift, like start directing traffic as far as like, um, I may even throw something on the website, like shopping for Father's Day and like redirect to Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. After the 10th, that'd be clean. Yeah. That'd be good. Cool. Yeah. And we'll switch out the links on our socials. Perfect. Yeah, whatever works, whatever works. But this looks good, man. I mean, Shopify is getting sales and all of that. Amazon's getting sales. So we'll just hit the gas a little bit and see what happens. So, all right. Yeah, let's just regroup. Uh, let's just make sure we regroup on Slack like tomorrow or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll keep you updated. All right. Sounds good, brother. All right. Much love, man. All right, guys. So that's going to be the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. All of my videos are pretty raw, pretty just straightforward. I don't really edit many of these too much so hopefully you guys enjoy that style of content so if you enjoy that definitely let me know down in the comments i'm super grateful for everyone who is supporting so thank you for that and i'll see you guys in the next video